Welcome to Thorns Live, presented by Toyota, streaming your way live for post-game analysis, interviews, and maybe even a few questions from you Thorns fans out there. How about it? How about this? The Portland Thorns shocking North Carolina one to nothing in the quarterfinals of the NWSL Challenge Cup Tournament, just concluding from Utah. The game in the books, massive upset. Eight seeded Portland knocking off top seeded Carolina, previously unbeaten Courage. And here to talk about it, former Thorns keeper <laughs> and fan favorite from the Bahamas, Karina LaFleur. Talk to me about this match, baby. I, I, I mean, I'm a goalkeeper, former goalkeeper. So to me, to see the grit that we saw Klinenberg talk about them before they displayed that, they found a way. They found a way to break down a North Carolina team, like you said, that just expects to win. And, of course, just fantastic goalkeeping by Eckerstorm. I mean, I, I was jumping up. I mean, I'm a new mom. My poor baby pair, she's like, what's going on? I was like, oh, <laughs> just, I'm excited. And what a win. What a way to, to, to get it done when it really counts and get Portland to the next round. We'll talk about Eckers from beginning, middle, and end, but we have got to go to the game-winning queen herself, Morgan Weaver, with the game winner. <laughs> you hold your run, Rocky found you. Your team said, "Man, you got to shoot the ball." Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly. I had to shoot the ball, and it finally happened today. <laughs> you you break through. You get your first goal. What does that mean to you? I mean, all the years of hard work, you get your first professional goal, and it's in a playoff game. Talk to us what this really means to you. Um, I'm super excited. I mean, very humbled, obviously, to be able to play with this team. And I mean, I have, wouldn't have been able to do it without Rocky and that amazing assist she had. Um, everyone on this team did such an amazing job. So I'm so excited to be able to share the win with my team and just being able to advance and stay in this bubble. I'm super excited. All the adversity you guys have faced, and now when it counts, you stepped up. For you, what what did you learn about yourself and the team in this game? Um, I learned that we have the amount of grit that's amazing. I mean, we don't stop for anything, just like Kling said in the beginning. Grit is what it's going to take, and we brought as much as we could, and, you know, we gave it our best, and we came out here, and we knew we were going to win. I, when we walked into this locker room, I was like, guys, we're winning today. This is our game, and everyone was like, yes, it is, and you know what? We took it home, and we're, we're going to go to the semis, and I'm super excited. Well, congratulations. Thank well you. Done. Well done, well done, Morgan Weaver. Uh, you've got some rest now, some days that you can kind of take a breather, but I got to think training is going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Weaver, first professional career goal, as Karina said, and it's the game winner against the mighty Carolina Courage, the arch rival of the Thorns. Congratulations. Thank you. Karina, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to our next guest in a second. So, you know, Sink is ready. And, and I know you're going to want to talk to her. I got so oh, much Sink to talk back. to you about. But if Sink's waiting in the wings, we got to bring Sinky in, right? Your Canadian teammate. Well, my Sinky, look who we've got here. Sinky! <laughs> look at you. Sinky, is, I mean, should I just kind of excuse like myself and let you guys do this post game thing yourselves? Honestly, what does this feel like right now? You take a deep breath, but just try to explain the emotion. Um, like pure exhaustion because it's a little hot. And then like, you know, it's nice to get our first win of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you say, first win of the tournament, you guys just, they, you wanted to make it interesting for all of us, clearly. Naturally. But, Naturally, but what does it mean to have obviously you have Moran go down, you have the list starts, but you have the young players come in and step up. What what does that tell us and tell you about the youth of this team? No, I mean just the whole team. Like we've faced so many adversities like before the tournament, like with the people that aren't here, the people that are injured that aren't able to play, and then we're dropping like flies in the tournament. And it's just like next person up um and it's it's something we pride ourselves on and it, it it actually makes me very sad that we're not gonna have a season because mm -hmm. this team is this team is something special um and hopefully this is just the the start of something for this group 
you you said something to them right after the last hydration break, right? And I know you you're not the leader to do the rah rah and do the inspirational talk, but like, what did you say in that moment to the players? No, just to dig deep. I mean, this is why we've been like we worked so hard in our little short preseason that we had. Um, <laughs> But that, like we were gonna get our chance, you know, and it was just a matter of putting it away. And I mean, and then you, you know, you've got someone like Britt in that. Like, what the heck was that, right? Wow. Huh? Um, okay. Just yeah, just so proud of this team, man. Well, you, you did bring her up in net. I mean, I you know I was going crazy the whole time, just losing my mind. What is like to have to lose a one? Two and you're on your third one, and she steps up and she comes up. But what does that mean to the team moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's just we have such faith in all three of our goalkeepers. And I mean, even Nadine was dressed on the bench, ready to go if needed. Um, I'm glad we didn't have to see that. Um, <laughs> but they're just all three of them, all three of our goalkeepers are just class. And I'm so proud of yeah. Britt. Like, to go, I mean, just the journey that she's had. I can only imagine the emotional roller coaster these past like few weeks for her. But she's the ultimate team player. She's always there for her teammates, and man, she deserved this. This that was incredible. She can, can you I about this win? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Karina. Karina be go quiet. Go ahead. I'll shut up. And you go ahead. I'll be quiet. I'll well, let me just throw this out there real quick, Karina. Well, because I'll forget it. Sinky, you know darn well outside of your locker room and the Thorns fans, nobody was giving you a chance in this match. Uh, not many. Not many were giving you a chance in this match. You guys seem to relish in the bend, not break situation where you thought, okay, how do you like us now? I mean, this was an underdog role extraordinaire for you guys. And the, the slipper fits real well in the Cinderella story. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, we knew we had a chance. Like, and especially after the way we played them the first game of the tournament, we knew we were right there. Um, it's funny, like in our hotel, you know, coaches, other coaches from other teams wishing us good luck, saying you're the only team in this tournament that can beat them. Um, mm. And so – you know, hearing things like that gives you confidence. And um, yeah, I, we knew we had a chance, you know, obviously they had, they had a ton of chances and couldn't find the back of the net, but we got our, our couple and we managed to finish one. And that's in a game like this, that's the difference. Um, they're, don't get me wrong. They're a world-class team. There's a reason why they've won, you know, back-to-back -back shields and champions. Um, but yeah, we, we just had belief heading into this game that something special could happen. Karina, all you, go. No, I mean, I'm just listening to her. I mean, think. I mean, I know you and I have played on many years together, and it's it just starts with belief. And to hear you speak like that, it's bringing me back to the days of playing together, whether it's the Canada-USA rivalry. All you need is belief. And it's it, you take that belief and you take that grit and you take that – connection of just like we can do this and it's just been interesting because you haven't had the thorns there the crowd but yet you felt them on the field and, and I imagine you felt the fans in this game and that's what helped you get through this well I think we all felt the salt and straw that the riveters bought us last night <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I mean I mean whether we're we're here in Utah or back in Portland and we have the best fans in the world and I they sent us like two dozen pints of ice cream. We're like, oh man. Um, That's but good. No, this like this is for them. I mean, they've supported us, you know, the entire way. Every single year I've been on this team. And like Kling before the game, she gave the ultimate pregame speech. You know, our motto is build a bonfire, and she just said, put put some gasoline on it because we're building the bonfire for the fans back home to see. So. Uh, hopefully they watched it and they'll continue to follow us. That's so, awesome. Suki, congratulations on a really oh, piss. Oh, oh, got a Portland oh. thoughts on. Oh, darn right. Hi, Paris. 
Sorry. Oh my God. No, that is, oh, Karina, she's it's getting so big. That is too big. She's getting so big. <laughs> Oh, All right, baby no, Paris. All right, seeking, uh, recover, rest, do what you uh, do. Yeah, I'm oh, getting too old for this. Well, no, we'll see you again very soon in the semi. It's phase. like a, it's like a hundred degrees out here. Like this just isn't healthy. I've been there for three weeks now. Come on, Come on now. <laughs> Thank you, Seeking. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Karina, I love you. Love you. Mm. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay, KK. Bye. See in the look. See, well, no, you keep her close. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Paris in a second. Uh, but seeing Sink's face when she saw you, I, I'm quite sure that wasn't for me, uh, lighten up. That was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk to the boss himself, Mark Parsons, uh, who got his club ready in, and used the rotations and used the subs brilliantly. Um, he, he's going to be with us in a second. And while he's getting mic'd up, mic'd up uh, we will tell you that Karina and I will continue to break the match down after our guests come and go. Uh, Mark Parsons, are you there? I'm hoping I'm you're here. Oh, I'm, here. I'm here. Oh, Karina LeBlanc, <laughs> baby. And Anne. Hey, Holy pal. cow. What a surprise. Congratulations. Sinky uh <laughs> wants to talk some more. No. No, she's been she's been cut off. Uh, it's your turn. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties with you, Mark. Can you hear us? Okay, he's back. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, first half, first half all Carolina. Let's let's just be uh, honest. In, in many ways, and your defense was bend, not break, in mentality. And then you make the most of one of those scoring situations in that second half with Haran already on the bench. How were you able to keep them from the back of the net, yay, Eckerstrom, and to take advantage of slowing them down in the second half and striking? Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't think um, uh, I think things happen just for a reason. Before we left Portland, we had a belief the results weren't going our way. Obviously, performances were. The belief only got stronger. Something we mm. talked about is – we wanted to grow a lot of new roots under our tree this year that the roots are strong, but when storms hit, we actually get stronger in those storms and not, not see the, um, the core of our tree buckle. And that's what's happened. We've had adversity already, right? This, this team is a team that should and needs to win, but we hadn't won. And the belief, strangely, only kept getting better and stronger. Uh, we weren't our most cohesive best today. Uh, maybe we felt some pressure on the ball and we weren't ourselves, but defensively, it was hot here, but I would go another 100 minutes, and I don't think Kelly Hubley, Menges, and the rest of that crew and Brea Kostrom would have conceded. What would you say is the one thing you learned from this team? You, saw, you talk about belief. You talk about grit that you believe now will take you all the way through. Well, I, I've got to credit the leadership of the players, and, and everyone can be a leader. Um, and we have people that lead individually or people lead by example. But the players are really invested this year more than ever. It's been a conscious thing. Um, we've empowered players a bit more. And um, and you see the result of when you empower players, when you empower uh, the people that have the most control. Um, and these leaders have, have stepped up massively. It's Sink is one of the best leaders in the world. Um, but she's invested time in other people. She's invested time to, to get other leaders ready and prepared. And you look at what the strength of our group looks like now in chemistry um, it's never been stronger, and people maybe thought I was crazy when I before we come to this tournament. Uh, our style of play has never been more clear, and our culture has never been more clear. Mm. Of course, we didn't show style of play much today, um, but we showed the other side. We showed what our culture is about, and yeah, we uh, we bent a little bit today, but we didn't break. And Brett Eckerstrom, I mean that free kick on Dabinia. Um, oh. I think everyone in the stadium thought oh. it was in. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, she got up there, rolling back some LeBlanc memories. <laughs> leadership and I think a lot of people see the game they see the tactics but they don't understand the importance of it and I think Eckerstorm was an example of that today she felt empowered you could see it from the get-go and can you talk a bit about not only her play but her stepping into the role and just believing in herself that comes from you and this tone you set so it's, it feels like it's been a bit of a uh, a bit of a fairy tale in the sense of 
Uh, we've had some key moments where we've had setback after setback after setback after setback. And uh, the group sees the setback and go and steps forward. Or the mm. other way of saying it was, you know, we were dodging curveballs have been thrown at us early on in this preparation and we were dodging them. And we got fed up with the curveballs like, fuck it. No, sorry, the curveballs are going to come. We keep moving. They hit us. They're going to bounce right off. And um, yeah, I, I think we look at look at Brit Extra's okay. performance today. And I, I haven't said this to the team. I didn't want to say anything after the game. And it'll be the first thing that comes out of my mouth. People on, who watch this game will go, yeah, but Brit just turned up and Brit had that day and she turned it on today. Like she woke up and said, I'm going to have a good game. She, she had to deal with some adversity here. We've gone with Bella. We've given Bella the opportunity. Brit's training performance, I know it's cliche. And I told the group in our, fi in our final meeting before this game, sorry, second final meeting, um, before we knew Bella was injured, so two, two days ago, before we knew Bella was injured, I praised the players that had trained that day because the group couldn't train. Britt was the best trainer, and she's been her heart's been broken four times in this time. Mm. She's trained incredibly well. She supported Bella. And then Bella goes down, and, and uh, honestly, I text the group straight away. I said, I don't want to hear anything about how this injury happened or why it happened. Britt's been ready for weeks. Mm. We, get, we support Britt. We give her what she needs now and we make sure we take care of Bella and she come out. So short version is that it didn't, she didn't just turn up and decide to turn up today. It, it's not that she is through hard work. Confidence comes through the reps. Confidence comes through training. Um, it helps when you've got AD France, Bella, Bella Bixby and, and Nadine Anger are part of the decor. And then the last thing attached to this, someone very, very important who helps me a lot, texts me straight after the game and said, look, football gods are trying to send you a message for a while. And here it is culture wins you're going to have yeah. good and bad days on the field you're going to have good yeah. and bad. we've been brilliant for four games and haven't won we were okay today but we had resilience and and the culture drove that resilience um i slipped up a little bit. i didn't value the culture piece like i had done previous years and yeah i'll never make that mistake again because days like this are possible fantastic fantastic win you mentioned that you go into this knockout phase winless what a time to pick up your first win, what an opponent to beat. Top seeded Carolina, you're our rivals. Congratulations, Mark, and we will see you after the semifinals. Hey, thank you, and Karina, where are you? Are you in front? Where are you? I'm in the Bahamas. That's <laughs> oh, all right for some. All right, well, we'll win this thing and we'll come and join you, okay? Cheers to that. See you later. Thank you. You know, it's Karina. It's 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 meant to be that we've got you as the analyst for this post-game show, Thorns Live, presented by Toyota, because Bella Bixby has been one of the main talks of this entire tournament, doing so much with the opportunity that she's finally given after toiling in anonymity for a few years. She goes down. And here's Eckerson, one of the forgotten players, if you will from those of us on the outside looking in, and yet the belief in her from teammates, staff, all personnel, and ultimately in herself, monumental. She was as good as you'll see in goal today. Why, how? You know, it's, as a goalkeeper, you just have to always believe in yourself, whether you're starting or not. You have to know you're just waiting for that moment because it's not like the other positions where you get to go in if there's a, a, an injury or in the 59th minute. You know the only time you play is if there's an injury, unfortunately, or you're not getting in. Um, and you just have to have that belief. And exactly what Mark just said, she's been on point. And that's exactly, she knew going in, she's like, I've been ready for this. I've just been waiting for my moment. And that's the mentality you have to have when you're not starting. You can't be feeling sorry for yourself. You can't slouch back because you know once you get in, it like sometimes you get in, it's a penalty kick. Right away, you have to be sharp. Sometimes you get in, it's a situation like this. So you just have to have that belief. And clearly she has. Clearly the team had the belief in her. And of course, the coaching staff. And it's just fantastic to hear it. Like for me, as Mark was talking, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and she was just waiting for a moment. And she has had her moment. She's played in games before, and she yeah. just was like, this is my time to rise. And I'm so glad you brought that up. This is not a rookie or a newbie, as, as, as Bella, not a rookie, but her first time ever playing on American soil. Britt Eckerstrom, on the other hand, filling in for A.D. French many, many times over the course of the last couple of years when A.D. was called up. 
So Brit took that experience, I'm thinking, right? And said, yep. plug, and, plug and play, baby, plug and play. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been a starter. I've been a backup. Okay. And the mental side of the game, for a goalkeeper, you hear this all the time, but it's so important. And if mentally you're ready physically, it's just going to come. And she was ready for both. And it's just so beautiful. It's a beautiful story, obviously. Playoff yeah. game, do or die. She comes up, not just big. She comes up huge. Okay? I I told you, I scared my daughter. Yeah. I scared my <laughs> dog. <insane>. Okay. <laughs> From Davina. Because it, was, it, it wasn't just, okay, some people may say, you know, the shots were at her. No, she came up. In the big saves, I mean, I sent you a little voice memo. Yeah, you I did. Lost it because it, it's it's a testament to all the hard work. And I think sometimes you see the big names, you see the success of that, but you don't see the players, the role players and whatnot. And this, she got to shine. And, and, and I know the Thorns family is happy, but I'm so happy for her personally. Okay. Uh, you and I are going to take a quick break because we've got highlights queued up. Highlights that I think Thorns fans are going to really enjoy. Here you go. Gets on the back shoulder of Minguez, can't stay with her. First time hit because it's a perfectly placed ball. Daniels a bit behind to Bina, who strikes. Excellent save, pushed aside by Eckerstrom. There were questions coming into this match how Brent Eckerstrom would respond thus far. So far, so good. Dabinia, look at Dabinia make this run. Eckerstrom able to hang on to this, not concede the corner. Good find. And this lifted over the bar. Not the name you would think to score a game winner in a game of this magnitude, but gave it a good look. Done. Good ball forward. Hamilton off on the right. Hamilton for North Carolina. Palmed away. Eckerstrom standing on her head in this first half. Scoreless minutes by encouraged opposition. One goal could win this thing. Header steered. Saved. Eckerstrom denying Dabinia. And you can look and see the look on Dabinia's face. She can't believe it. Last fall for Rodriguez. Rodriguez cuts this across. Portland scores. Weaver, the number eight seed, without a win in the preliminary round, grabbed the advantage in the 68th. And this is why you can't allow teams to hang around. If you don't finish your chances, they will come back to punish you. Portland did everything right on the defensive side, restricting North Carolina to half chances. Dabinia Eckerstrom, unreal save. Oh my goodness, Eckerstrom. Every angle, every angle, <laughs> Eckerstrom with a world-class save. Uh, the storylines of this match is unbelievable. The bottom line though, Karina, is that the Portland Thorns advanced to the semifinals by winning this knockout round match against top-seeded Carolina. The Thorns will play the winner of Utah-Houston. That match is tonight, regardless of opponent, and Portland has played neither one of those clubs. Regardless of the opponent, what momentum does Portland bring into Wednesday's semifinals? It's the most important thing of the game because they know, as Mark said, it wasn't the best game. It wasn't the best performance tactically tactically but the most important thing is the belief and they know that they can get through it it's a whole new tournament now it's a whole new no. cup i mean the past is the past it's forgotten about and now they can just feel and believe and they have that unity and they know that they don't need their big stars as some other teams have they just need each other and that is the key factor and i'm telling you the other teams you can come with all the tactics in the world but at the end of the day, when you can find a way to win and you can get the win, knowing that it wasn't your best performance, you got a whole new belief going forward. Boy, and unbelievable that probably for the first time ever, the entire field was pulling for Portland and not Carolina <laughs> because no one wants to play Carolina. Well, you got your wish, folks, and uh, the, the Portland Thorns are waiting. Um, Karina, before we let you go, uh, just a huge congrats to you and your husband, when you welcome Paris, your daughter, into the world back in late March. But I'd love for you, you've got so many Portland Thorn fans, give us an idea of those, there she is, precious little lamb, of the scary time that you endured uh, as a mom 
and just with the COVID virus running rampant, help us understand what you went through shortly after the birth of Paris late March. So hi, Portland world. This is Paris, my baby girl. Um, oh. So, you know, I gave birth. It wasn't the easiest birth, uh, but um, unfortunately, about a week after that, I was experiencing shortness of breath. And it would result that I had heart failure. Mm. Um, I had total effusion. Um, it was pretty terrifying. I'm actually here in the Bahamas right now. We haven't left. We, I was here for, I'm with CONCACAF right now, um, or I was, or I still am. But anyway, um, call the doctor from home and the doctor's like, get to the hospital right away. So the island was, the country was actually shut down and I had 25 minute drive. She was squeezing my finger and, Mm. At that point, I actually thought that was it. I thought um, that was going to be it for me. Um, I'm just looking at her. She's so mm -hmm. precious. But got to the hospital, was diagnosed. They treated me. And after three days, I was going to get to go home. And the best part about going home was I was going to get to be with her. But unfortunately, one of the doctors in the ER had COVID. And sadly, he passed away. Mm. Um, so because of that, I had to self-quarantine so for two weeks kind of right after giving birth <laughs> um i was separated from her i couldn't hold her i couldn't touch her i couldn't um i couldn't do anything i just had to sit in the room and my husband was phenomenal because he he fed me and fed and you know he cleaned off everything making sure she was okay and he was taking care of her because it was just us here so um you know the you learn a lot of things and it was one of those things is that mentally we talk about the mental game yeah. is that I'd always said that, you know, mentally I thought I was really strong, but you go through something like this and you learn that everything I'd ever learned as an athlete was an asset to me to help me be able to stay through this. Cause I couldn't have, I couldn't get too emotional. Um, and I do have to say, Anne, like I had put out a video and I got a lot of thorns sending me love and i i don't want to get choked up but it's like it it meant so much to me because i needed that team around me i needed the 12th man or woman you know that the fans have always been and it just helps me and <laughs> um yeah I, I i i went through a lot but you know at the end of the day this is the reward and i you know one of the things i asked myself during was what was i meant to learn about myself in this process, as we all are going through with COVID, as we all are going through with our own situations. And, you know, I hope that everybody keeps perspective and knows that we're gonna get through this. You know, they can all have a Paris in their life and she's just perfect. I'm trying to tell the story, but she's just like, I just went, ah, God. If she's not the cutest thing in the world, if she's not the so cutest excited. thing in the world, rocking that Thorns gear, oh my. Karina, so you're you're good. Everybody's good. You're healthy. Well, I still have to watch my health. I can't get it too high. Okay. Um, my blood pressure too yeah. high. Um, I'm back working at Concacaf, which is um, which is where this big W is for. So I'm in charge of 41. Not in charge of. I'm helping develop for football or soccer for girls in 41 countries. Um, but now that I have her, I just want to do everything in this world to make it better for women in sports and everything else. Karina LeBlanc, former Canadian great, former Portland great, and a beloved Portland fixture with the Thorns fans. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. And I'm telling you, between you and the win, Thorns fans are going to be buzzing all weekend long. All right. That's going to do it. Guys. We're, we're, we're going to wrap things up. The NWSL Challenge Cup Post-game show presented by Toyota is going to say so long. Up next, we'll play the winner of Houston and Utah. That will be the semifinal match July 22nd, 9.30 a.m. We will be there post-game live with you, again, presented by Toyota. Until then, have a great weekend and bask in this upset win, the Thorns shocking Carolina 1-0 in the first knockout round match, the Thorns advance. Have a great weekend, everybody.